All right, level one and welcome to re-entry. We're currently sitting inside a command module of the Apollo spacecraft and in today's video we will take a look at the spacecraft itself and go through the steps needed to pre prepare this cockpit for launch. So if we step outside, uh, you can see the entire rocket standing here ready on the launch pad. Uh, we're currently sitting inside the capsule just located uh, b b below this launch escape system. Uh, the spacecraft itself is standing on top of the 363 feet high launch vehicle named the Saturn V. Initially, five F1 engines will ignite and produce 7.9 million pounds of thrust, lifting the 6.5 million pound heavy rocket off the launch pad. So there's a lot of power involved and there's uh, a lot of systems that's going to be working together to make this possible. So if we step back into the uh, cockpit itself, you can see the, uh, the main panels in front of us. It's actually called the main display console and consists of hundreds of fully interactable switches that will control all the systems needed to get this into orbit and eventually uh, to the moon. The backup crew has already been doing a lot of uh, work in here just before we entered the cockpit, so most of these switches are already uh, configured properly. But there's still a couple of steps we need to do. So if we go into the mission pad here, there's a tab called checklists, which contains all the checklists we need. We select the boost preparation checklist, and this is actually the real checklist, which is uh, it was used by the real astronauts in Apollo. There's a couple of minor modifications, but most of it is uh, the same. So I've created this system that allows you to get some guidance when you run through a couple of checklists. So if you hit run, a uh, highlighter will show us where we need to, uh, to pay attention. So right now we need to uh, start uh, setting up the computer. Uh, the computer is responsible for a lot of the tasks throughout this entire mission. Uh, the first thing we need the computer to do is to uh, tell the rocket its orientation on Earth. It's currently standing on the launch pad, for the, but there's no way for the rocket itself to know. In order, order to do this, we need to run warp 37 which is uh, the verb that allows us to change the major program that's currently running on the computer. So I'm going to hit enter and then it accepts a noun and the noun will need to be the program we want to run which is 01. Now program 01 is running. It's now aligning everything up with the pre-configured azimuth of the mission and it's aligning the inertial platform and the IMU uh, according to this. It automatically switched to program 2, which is the final alignment program. It's now detecting the rotation of Earth and then uh, slowly updating the IMU with this uh, minor movements. Everything is very important to get into the right trajectory once we ignite those powerful engines. Right, having that done, um, I actually have the checklist here in front of me on the tablet, so I'm also going to follow it there. Uh, once we have that done, uh, we need to ensure that all of the auto RCS thrusters are in the correct position here. Uh, all these thrusters here is what we're going to be using to modify the attitude of the capsule in case of emergencies and once we're in space. Uh, it can be uh, powered by both the main bus A or the main bus B. They're all set up uh, correctly by the backup crew, so you don't actually need to do anything on this. I was just going to show you where it's located. In addition to this, I was mentioning main bus uh, A and B. Uh, we need to check the electrical system. So first of all, I'm going to check battery C and uh, ensure that it's within the limits of the voltage, which it is. Uh, 
Battery C is a very important battery because you can tie it up with a lot of the system moves in case anything goes wrong. So it's important to now know that it's operational, you know, before we launch. In addition to this, we want to ensure that main bus A and main bus B has some volt DC voltage as well as you can see the amps currently a out of it. Uh, the spacecraft itself is powered by a couple of different power sources. The first one is uh, a couple of fuel cells. You have three of them on board. And uh, the fuel cells are power plants that produces uh, electricity. And you can see the state of them here. These are all connected to main bus A and B. And is the primary source of power for most part of the mission. In addition, we also have batteries that allows us to connect batteries to the main bus A and B for redundancy uh, and uh, a backup power source if, if the primary source should fail. In addition, the fuel cells are jettisoned right before we re-enter, so it's important that the batteries are operational. Alright, now that we know that the electrical system is okay, we need to set up the scale of the attitude indicator. The scale allows us to control how sensitive all this uh, instrument should be, and uh, we're just going to set it to uh, the middle position, which is 5.5. Five. Uh, in addition, we want to set the uh, rates to high, and then we're going to set the uh, power of the translation controller to powered. This allows us to use translation control if we need it. In addition, we want to enable the uh, uh, rotational control as well. And this is done by these two switches. Uh, these two switches will set and enable the uh, direct coils of all of these thrusters. The direct uh, coils are uh, controlled by uh, pushing on the joysticks and will uh, be uh, controlling each of those coils directly without going through any other systems. In addition we want to set the command module uh, mode of the computer to free because we don't want any other system to try to take control if anything should happen. Next we want to set the B mags to uh, rate 1 which is the down position. The B mags are actually controlling the backup platform to the inertial measurement unit, uh, which is called the GDC, uh, which stands for the gyro display coupler. The B mags are providing rates to the spacecrafts, as well as maintaining this GDC platform as best as it can. Okay, now. Uh, let's also set the uh, S-band of the Luna module radio to off, as well as the uh, VHF AM of the commander's radio to off and perform a quick radio check. By having done that, we can just put this back to transmit receive because that's the normal position of these two radios. Uh, next, we want to uh, set the uh, RCS command to off. We don't want to bump into anything during ascent and if something happens. Uh, but if something does happen, we can easily just switch this uh, switch to uh, command on to be able to use the RCS system. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do is to set the uh, thrust vector control servo power to uh, AC1 and main bus A on the servo 1 and servo 2 to AC2 M and B. Alright, then we will need to set the fuel cell reaction valves to latch. Uh, this means that we're going to apply a little bit of electrical power to keep the, uh, the valve closed during the high vibrations of booth. But once we're in orbit and free fall, we can go and set it back to normal, which will then just use magnetic, uh, a magne magnetic device to keep it sealed. All right. Now I'm just gonna uh, speed up time a little bit, and you can do that by using uh, the uh, one, two, two, three, four, five, six uh, keys on the keyboard, which allows us to speed up time up to 100 times. Well, we usually just initially put into the cockpit 25 minutes okay. before launch. All right, uh, CMP on panel two, just you verify program two. Verify program two. Program two. And it detected right, that program uh, two was running. CMP on panel two, three, 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 insert verb 75 and do not enter. All right, uh, insert verb 
75 and do not Verb enter. Alright, so Verb 75 is the uh, shortcut to run program 11 on the computer. The program 11 is an essential uh, program that will r automatically run if we're in program 2 now and the spacecraft detects that we're released from the launch pad. Uh, the program 11 will show very important information during launch among other things uh, so it's important that it's running. If for some reason the signal uh, doesn't reach all the way to the computer and it won't automatically run program 11 once we're released from the launch pad, uh, we can just hit enter and the command is ready and it will start program 11. It's just a backup, uh, but most likely uh, program 11 will automatically run. Okay, now let's set the tape to forward. And then we will need to uh, bypass uh, the radiator radiators when it comes to the glycol. So I'm just going to move the camera a little bit forward here. So it says here on this handle, primary glycol to radiators, pull to bypass. Uh, during launch, the radiators will be very hot uh, due to friction and due to everything that goes on. Uh, so we don't want to send the coolant glycol through the hot radiators because that will make it do the opposite. It will warm all the instruments the glycol goes through instead of cooling them. Now we're 4 minutes and 10 seconds before launch, these lights were eliminated. This uh, just indicates that the engines are ready, uh, but they're not uh, thrusting. Once the engines illuminate red, it means that the engine uh, is not producing any thrust. If the engine is ignited and they spool off and produce enough thrust, the light here for the respective engine will extinguish and you will know that everything is correct. There's a couple of other things that we need to do and uh, that's to tie the uh, main bus with the battery. So we're going to connect the battery A to uh, main bus and battery B to the main bus. This will uh, give us some redundancy in terms of power as we were talking about uh, earlier. So, in case anything goes wrong with the fuel cells, we still have the batteries and during power maneuvers we also need the elec extra electricity provided by those batteries. Now, we're getting closer to launch, so we're gonna turn off the PADCOM radio on both the uh, command module and uh, on both the commander seat and the lunar module pilot seat. And then the last thing that we will do is to press GDC Align. Uh, this is not uh, done until 45 seconds before launch, according to the checklist, so I'm also going to be waiting for that. But uh, while we wait for that, uh, we'll uh, go through a couple of those very important things in terms of launch. So once you're released from the launch pad, it's important to check that the mission time is started and that the uh, program 11 is started uh, so we'll know uh, that everything is right in terms of launch. There's actually a full checklist that will go through the entire uh, boost process from uh, start to orbit or with some emergency procedures as well but I'm gonna go back to that in the next video. Alright, now I'm going to spool time a little bit so we get into hey, the Alright, GDR GDC align, I'm just going to press that and this will align the GDC with the IMU so that both of the stable platforms, both the primary and the backup, are uh, having the same reference. If something goes wrong, the other one can take over and uh, they're configured to be kind of the same. All right. This concludes this first video. Uh, in the next video I will uh, perform the ascent itself, the boost, uh, all the way into orbit. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.